Or it's time for members' statements. The member from Stormont, Glendale, South Glen Gary. Thank you, Speaker. On Monday, March the 20th, the Williamstown area in my riding of Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry lost an outstanding volunteer and an insp in inspiration to our communities. Jay Wolven worked tirelessly to make our region the best place to call home. He volunteers for organizations as diverse as the Williamstown Fair Board, the SD&G Business Development Centre, the Altsville Theatre Series, Movie Theatre Series, and St. Lawrence College, just to name a few. Everywhere he went, he brought a contagious passion and an inspiring dedication to his fellow residents. I heard past students say that he made a difference in their lives. Jay was an accountant by trade, yet he remains, but yet we remain, we remain wondering whether that was a true profession. What energy could Jay Pat possibly have to spare for accounting after all his community work? Jay wasn't just a worker, but a lively character with smiles and enthusiasm and he shared with everyone that came across. In his mind, in the minds of many visitors to the Williamstown Fair, he will always be remembered for his trademark. Good morning, Williamstown, was called. Over the loudspeaker that I could hear at home over a kilometer away. And of course, his trademark, yellow knee socks. We should all strive to be more like Jay. Good listeners, hard working, always upbeat, and always ready to lend a hand and share a kind word. Yellow socks were optional. Rest in peace, Jay. You will certainly be missed. Thank you. Are there member statements? The member from Algoma, Mayor Tulin. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Always an honour to stand and speak in the House on behalf of the good people of Algoma, Manitoulin. Speaker, today I'd like to speak to the hard work of two remarkable athletes, Kelsey Meelan and Matthew Bedard, from my writing, that competed this month at the Special Olympics Winter Games in Austria. Both Matthew and Kelsey competed in snowshoe races at the Winter Games. For Kelsey, this was her, her second winter game and she did great speaker kelsey put up two great times in both the 100 and 200 meter snowshoe race for matthew this was his first winter game and he's coming back not with one but two silver medals in the 800 meter snowshoe race and the 4x4 four 100 meter race Algoma Manitoulin couldn't be prouder to have had these two incredible athletes representing Canada. Speaker, today I'm really proud of our Canadian athletes. Canada sent 148 Special Olympic athletes to Austria, and as a member from Hamilton, Stony Creek would say, wow! And 35 of those athletes were from Ontario. What an incredible achievement, and thanks to all of our Ontario athletes who represented us. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of all of Algoma Manitoulin, Matthew and Kelsey, congratulations. Your hard work paid off. Algoma Manitoulin could not have had two better athletes represent us at the Winter Olympic Games. I know we're... I know we're all very proud in Ontario of our Special Olympians and uh, representing Ontario and Canada, so thank you for that statement. The member from Beaches, East Jordan. Well, thank you, Speaker. I am delighted today to extend warm greetings to members of the Bangladeshi community as they commemorate Independence Day of Bangladesh, which was celebrated yesterday. Beaches East York is home to an incredible community of Bangladeshi Canadians, and I'm delighted that they made me feel so welcome in their community. And the occasion brings us together to reflect on Bangladesh's Declaration of Independence from Pakistan in 1971 and to celebrate the country's rich culture and heritage. Bangladeshis champion and continue to champion the Mother Language Day movement, aimed to protect and preserve the culture they were raised in. And I want to take this opportunity to pay tribute to the Bangladeshi community in becoming an integral part of our multicultural success story. Members of this dynamic community continue to help make Ontario even stronger. Last year, we hosted the first Bangladeshi flag raising event down here at Queen's Park. And today, I'm happy to announce that at 4.30, we'll be hosting the second annual flag raising event, and there will be over 250 people coming from the Bangladeshi community on the front lawn. So among these will be joining us are Amit Shakma, President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Western Ontario, Hasina Kadar and Reza Mahoub, who are community leaders in the, my riding of Beaches East York. They run a group called Beaches Community Centre and Services, and Nasima Akhtar for the Bangladeshi Canadian Community Services. We will also be joined by some very special guests, a group of veterans from the Bangladeshi War of Independence. So I'm grateful for the
the many enduring contributions this community has had to our social, economic, and cultural life in our province. Please accept my best wishes. Abhinandana. Abhinandana. Congratulations. Further member statements, the member from Perry Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to tell the members of this leg legislature about an exciting opportunity for the town of Gravenhurst. For many years, Gravenhurst has been seeking a partner to redevelop the old Muskoka Regional Centre. They have found a great partner in Maple Leaf Schools. Maple Leaf Schools is a Chinese educational company that offers bilingual education in English and Mandarin, leading to a dual Chinese and Canadian high school diploma. Excellent. Right now, they have 25,000 students attending school in 14 cities in China, and they're planning to develop a flagship school here in North America. Yeah. They are particularly interested in the Muskoka Regional Centre because Gravenhurst is the birthplace of Dr. Norman Bethune, the Canadian doctor who is so well known and respected in China. This project fits with the town's official plan for this site and is supported by the town by the residents, the cottagers, and by the business community. It would create 200 construction jobs during development and then 200 permanent jobs. In a town of 12,000, that's a lot of new jobs. Mm -hmm. I know that the Minister of Infrastructure has met with the town of Gravenhurst, and I want to thank him for taking that meeting and reiterate just how important this project is to the town. I hope the Minister and Infrastructure Ontario will move quickly to make this school a reality. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Hamilton East Stony Thank you, Creek. Speaker. Speaker, it is uh, vital to this province's continued economic health that we preserve steel manufacturing both in northern Ontario and Sault Ste. Marie and in southern locations such as Hamilton and Nanticoke. The restructuring of Stelco has entered a new phase with a proposed sale of the company being put to a vote of creditors in April. 20,000 workers, retirees and their families are deeply concerned. Based on past painful experiences, they are skeptical of the good faith of foreign investors and doubtful of the ability of the Canadian governments to enforce agreements made by these investors. The rights and interests of all Stelco workers and retirees must be protected. The promises of pensions and health benefits to Stelco retirees earned through decades of labour must be honoured. They want to know why this government is allowing the pension plan to take, be taken off the balance sheet in this proposed sale. Why is it not considered a liability of the company? This company will have almost $300 million in cash at the end of May. Why have the post-employment benefits of retirees so desperately needed not been fully restored? Never again should a foreign company buying one of this province's major manufacturers be allowed to escape its obligations and commitments to, through a secret re renegotiation and agreement with the federal government. We, know, we need to know that this government will hold any new buyer fully accountable for every promise it makes to the workers, retirees and governments. Thank you. The member statements, the member from Ottawa, Oliam. Mr. President, ça me fait plaisir de me lever. It's a pleasure for me to express, celebrate something next week in my riding. It was the 20th anniversary to save Montfort Hospital. It's an hospital well known in the region. We survived because of Franco Ontarian solidarity, because at that time where I was cut uh, in hell, we celebrated one more time the Franco Ontarian solidarity to make sure that Montfort Hospital continued to serve the collectivity. Great uh, hospital that offers co uh, community health to all the regions, French and English speaking uh, uh, patients are well served there, and it is also a university hospital. We had a chance or the opportunity to sing the song Notre Place, which is the Franco Ontarian anthem, and it is. Uh, the official Franco Ontarian anthem. It was a very nice celebration. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from. I gotta get to the next page. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Uh, my statement today is about Linwood Water, uh, Linwood Mobile Home Parks water quality, uh, just outside of Edwards in the city of Ottawa. Uh, beginning in around 2006 and 2007, I started advocating for this community with uh, then City Councillor Doug Thompson and today's City Councillor uh, George Deruse. Not only is the uh, water of poor aesthetic quality, but it is not potable. And over the years, we have tried to find different solutions, whether that was the trickle system uh, coming out of Carlsbad Springs or signing onto a, a water pump 
from um, neighbouring uh, municipality of Russell, all which has been rejected. So it was up to us as uh, local politicians to try and get the property management, killing properties of Nova Scotia, to do something about the poor water quality there. Now let me make uh, the statement abundantly clear. This is third world water in the nation's capital of a G8 country. Yet this company, Killam Properties, is okay with allowing the residents in its property to have substandard water. And so today I'm calling on Killam Properties to stand up and do the right thing for the constituents of Nepean and Carleton who live in Linwood Mobile Home Park, who are living in affordable housing units and who cannot afford to move out. Killam Properties should be publicly shamed, Speaker, and that is why I'm here today as a member of provincial parliament. I am fed up after 11 years of representing these people in Linwood and Mobile Home Park that they now have a 30-plus year water quality problem. And enough is enough. Time is time. Killam Property better stand up and do the right thing. Well, Thank well, you very much, Speaker. Well, Thank you. That was the member from Nepean Carleton. I didn't get a chance to introduce him. The, 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 I, I call you nice things. The, 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 the <laughs> member statement, the member from the member from Davenport. Thank you, Speaker. And I rise today to inform the House about an event I had the pleasure of attending this weekend, an event that was hosted by the Vietnamese Women's Association of Toronto in my riding of Davenport. The wonderful event that I attended on Saturday commemorated the struggle of the Trunk Sisters and their brave stand against nations who occupied Vietnam nearly 2,000 years ago. It is celebrated annually by Vietnamese communities both here in Ontario and all around the world. The Trunk Sister story of fighting for freedom and independence became a symbol of resistance for the Vietnamese people and has inspired generations of Vietnamese women and girls. Their determination and strong leadership qualities are a testimony to the respected position of freedom and strength of women in the Vietnamese community. As the Member of Provincial Parliament for Davenport, I have seen firsthand the amazing work the Vietnamese community does. Ontario has always been a welcoming place for people from all around the world who choose to live in our province. Over 56,000 people from the Vietnam live in the GTA, with many choosing Davenport to be their home. That diversity, along with the strong contributions made by this community, represent one of Ontario's key strengths. I'm proud to support such a fierce and hardworking community in our province and in my riding, and hope that more women from all across the world can be inspired by the Trunk Sisters. I also want to thank Bin Min Hung, Chair of the Vietnamese Women's Association of Toronto, for the invitation to attend this wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Bruce Gray Owens. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This past month, Gray County residents were treated to some exciting news when it was announced their region was voted as one of the world's top seven intelligent communities for 2017 by an international network of cities and regions known as the Intelligent Community Forum. This group focuses on communities that use technology to enhance economic development and quality of life. In Gray County's case, it was just that, years of hard work, collaboration and smart strategic investments in the game-changing SWIFT. The Southwestern Integrated Fibre Technology Initiative was the key to this big win. In my supporting the SWIFT project, I had the pleasure of collaborating with Project Lead and now SWIFT CEO Jeff Hogan, as well as County CAO Kim Wingrove and Warden Alan Barfoot as they worked hard to ad advocate for the connection of 350 communities with over 3.5 million people, from the Bruce Peninsula to Aurelia and down to Lake Erie, to ultra-high speed and high-quality fiber-optic internet. These ongoing efforts in broadband connectivity, knowledge workforce, innovation and marketing will ensure new jobs and new investments for my riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound. They'll put us on a level playing field. But Mr. Speaker, Gray County's winning streak does not stop there. The county has also received the Planning and Building Initiatives Award and the Promotion Award for its tourism marketing efforts by the Economic Developers Council of Ontario. Over the past year, Gray County leaders have worked hard to build the region into a success story. From the new state-of-the-art Marine Emergency Duties Training and Research Centre at Georgian College in Owen Sound, the Specialist High Skills Major Program through the Blue Water District School Board, to the library-based technology training at the Owen Sound and North Union Public Library, there is no shortage of examples highlighting innovation and growth in our region. These efforts in broadband connectivity, knowledge workforce, innovation and marketing will ensure new jobs and new investments for my riding of Bruce Gray on Sound. With the list of such successes, my constituents should be proud for being recognized as true leaders here in Ontario and around the world. Thank you, Speaker, for allowing me the time to speak about these exciting developments in my riding and to say congratulations to Gray County once again. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. Their